uh, on Labour Social. It is Monday the 26th of June 2023. We're heading back home from Glastonbury. Got up uh, very early this morning, morning and all, uh, to uh, City city Life, I think. I'm going to have to turn the uh, brightness up on my phone. Can't actually see anything. No, I don't want to turn it down to brightness up. Hi everyone, uh, Ian Tuesday, Hannah Mad Murdoch. Good morning, Graham and everyone. Happy Monday. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lovely Monday. It's kind of like the world seems to be going a little bit um, crazy at the moment. Not, not in a bad way uh, for a change, but actually in, in quite a good way in that we're seeing um, the downfall of some of our most hated people, uh, which is wonderful. Might have to keep hold of the camera because it, it seems to be bouncing around quite a lot. Uh, morning, Graham. Uh, happy Monday. Uh, that's from Harley Mad Murdoch. Got Cathal saying morning all. We've got uh, ja Jupp James, Guten Morgen, Liebe Sorgen. Uh, morning all says Lofty the Softy. Have a great morning. So, uh, a couple of things I want to talk about today. Uh, first of all, that's to me. Awesome. <laughs> if you want to talk a bit more about that, we can. But uh, let's talk about the news. Um, obviously, they had a bit of a wild weekend in Russia with the. Hey, I'm back. Hi. You know what we were traveling to Ukraine a couple of, uh, well, last year when we went um, on those three trips over all the way over to Ukraine. for you. Um, normally decimated at this point, stopping at the little chef in Shepton Ch Mallet. Nightmare times. Yeah, I know, the little chef. They're not with us anymore, are they? Admiral Pegasus is there saying morning. We've got Simon and uh, Master Templar. So anyway, yes, um, there's been news today of the Defence Minister, the one that for goes and hates uh, the guy from Wagner. Uh, he's been in Ukraine, I think, today, inspecting the troops. So what the big what the big thing was about, essentially, from what I understand, um, was that basically Putin wanted to bring in the irregular army of the mercenary the mercenary army of Wagner. He wanted to bring them into the mainstream army, and then they wouldn't be under the leadership of. Brokosin anymore, so um, he spat his dummy out of the pram, took over a city, uh, Rostov, Rostov on Don or something, and then threatened to literally go and wipe out, um, well, invade and take over Moscow, which is like, you know, quite, quite a bold statement to make. Now, he was either paid off or paid off, or, or maybe he was just paid off um, to go and uh, into exile in Belarus. Uh, which is, you know, okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> did you watch Elton John's last performance? Hell yeah, we watched Elton John. It's fantastic. Uh, we were there at the Pyramid Stage. It was packed. It hasn't been packed like that since 2013, since the Rolling Stones played. And I should know because I was there as well. So now I've seen David Bowie singing Rocket, um, singing Space Oddity, Elton John playing Rocket Man, and the Rolling Stones playing Sympathy for the Devil. All like last year, never go complain about it, or they say it's not like what it used to be, but uh, had I not gone to the festival, I wouldn't have seen those things. Um, also, I uh, went to see um, Cat Stevens yesterday in the um, in the legend slot, and I know, I know there's probably people commenting on his politics here, but um, his, uh, his, his music's pretty pretty awesome. Anyway, so moving on. Uh, hello, a little bit late today. So it's... Hello, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, we keep losing connection. Are you back with me? Yes, back in the room. Uh, wow, well, there's a big message here from Wes. A transfer of power was always due entire thing since 2012 was about engineering a situation they could maintain their hegemony 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 and nudge core conservative values across the west i'm still standing putin singing the theme tune indeed uh, just keep losing signal uh, guys i don't 
you want to stick with this because uh, basically we keep dropping out. We're on the M5. I don't know why there's so many drops. But um, there we go. Uh, yeah, so just finish off talking about Russia. Um, it should be interesting what happens over the next couple of months. But um, there's one thing for sure that Vladimir Putin has had his image um, as uh, the strongman leader sort of thing. He's had that really, really undermined. First by the fact that his three-day war is now into, well into its second year. And secondly, the fact that his leader of his mercenary group that he, he claimed didn't exist for a long time is now um, in exile in Belarus. So there you go. Uh, do a later morning brew or afternoon tea. Am I doing afternoon tea? Should we do an afternoon tea? You're not in the home counties. Nothing works. Yeah, indeed. Reminds me of the early 2000s. <laughs> what is that? Because my phone signal's crap or because we're coming back from Glastonbury. So yeah, one news article that really stood out to me this morning when I was uh, flicking through the news, there was an article on the Guardian website about how many people have been made to pay fines to HMRC who hadn't had to pay any tax. 184,000 people um, Sorry, doing my head in. Sorry, yeah, it's a, I can imagine, mate, it's doing my head in. 184,000 people have been fined in one year by the HMRC for not filing their tax returns who don't pay any tax because they're earning less than £12,500 a year. And it goes back to the Vimes boot index. Like, why is it so expensive to be poor? Like there's a, there's a, a woman in the story or, or spoke about in the story who she got a hundred pound fine. She ignored it because she didn't think that she had to do that. She just thought she did pay as you earn. And uh, eventually the fine went up to two thousand pounds. And when you're earning ten grand a year, that's a fifth of all the money that you make that year. And one of the points about having amount of money you know that that you get um, tax free is it's not very much to try and live on, believe me. Super chats are open, by the way. Um, but um, it go, it, I, I just keep going back to the fact that being poor in this country is really expensive. And I was thinking about this because if you're a millionaire, right, you don't pay for your Glastonbury ticket. Because yeah, you'll know all the millionaires who know someone who's got a band on or performing or someone who owns a record company or... You know, they all know each other, they all went to school together. Whereas if you're earning minimum wage, the tickets this year were like over £300. Now we managed to get a discount on ours, so they came to about £150 each, which is still a lot of money for a festival. In my estimation, you know, when I was coming here in the 90s, it was, it was 60 quid each. Um, but the, the price of be, doing anything fun is out of the question for many, many people in this country. And one of the reasons is that they don't want you having fun. They don't want you to live. They just want you to maybe survive just enough, just enough nutrients to do a job, which is, you know, it's really sad. It's really sad that that is the situation that we found ourselves in in the United Kingdom where we've made it really, really easy and happy and good for all the wealthy and everyone else is barely making it through and another story which i felt was sort of connected with this the about children in the uk on average have slipped down the rankings 12 20 no 20 places in the world rankings for height and that's because of bad diets mostly and then we find out today i mean i mean this shouldn't come as any big surprise but the health outcomes for people suffering from heart disease and uh, cancer, are, but people getting them in the first place is a lot higher in this country, and the health outcomes are a lot lower than, or not less, well, a lot less good, I guess, um, than in comparable G7, G20 countries, advanced economies. Um, as long as we hold our nerves 
nerve, it will all be okay, it will be okay. I, this is the thing, I mean, these are systemic problems in British society that I think we're going to have to have a really good think about how we deal with this. And one of the ways that I will, I, I will support, um, you know, t- till my dying day is, is to bring in universal basic income. Like, why are they finding people who are only earning 12500 a year? And by the way, the fine that they pay is exactly the same as the amount that other uh, other people pay who are earning a lot more than that. It's only like £100 to start with. And that's whether you're earning 100000 or whether... You, obviously, you're going to pay your tax on top of that. But the actual fine for not filing your tax is... Um, I think it's the same until you get to a certain threshold, which is ridiculous. We should have a system in which you get £12,500 a year, £12, a year, that's it. And if you want to do some work, yeah, you know, then you get taxed from dollar one. But if you don't want to do a job in that respect, you can do another job like looking after the family, looking after your children, painting some pictures, doing some poetry, or something else with your life if you're happy not to have a car and not to have, you know, a lot of things going on. Uh, enjoying the discussions you and Phil have both the morning brew are on the agenda five pound super chat thank you very much Frank I'm doing my best this morning my canvas my, my phone is jiggling about on the windscreen here um, and obviously I'm a little bit battered because <laughs> of a, lo- a long weekend I'm very very much looking forward to having a shower and uh, sleeping in a, in a nice normal bed tonight, uh, let me tell you. Good morning, uh, Graham, that's from Daily Blase. Hey, Darren, how you doing, mate? Um, hope everyone is well. Yeah, we're still alive. We got out of Glastonbury, um, just about. Um, no thanks to Google, taking us a long way. Uh, Lucy Willis, it does feel like a war of nerves. Get your head down, don't notice the crazy, vote Labour. Uh, yeah, the fact of uni says um, the Tories have the belief that the rearing of children is solely down to parents. They ignore the old African saying it takes a whole village to raise a child. They do indeed. Um, the Met named a sixth suspect in the Stephen Lawrence case, Matthew White. Surprise, surprise, he's a prominent member of National Fund BNP. English Defence League Court. Yeah, I, I, she exactly doesn't surprise me at all. Those people, all the people in those groups are just absolute scumbags. Um, what network are you on? I'm on GifGaff. It's only £10 a month. And I just got a message up while I'm talking to you saying 80% of them are the way through my data allowance for this month. <laughs> oh, I can't wait till I have money. Oh, the things I will do. Um, but yes, poverty is an indicator of height, but I do wonder if our Asian East, Eastern immigration skews the height, which height figures a little. Rishi ain't tall after all. But neither am I, by the way, Scottish heritage. Uh, that, I've, I've met some very, very tall Scots people um, who were very nice as well. Um, I did went on to commit a second assault down the road. Talking about Stephen Lawrence murder, the one decent thing that the Daily Mail ever did in its in its um, sickeningly long existence is that it actually printed the pictures of um, four or five of the accused um, who killed Stephen Lawrence, calling them murderers. And if they, it wasn't true, they could they they, they, they were told that they could sue the newspaper for um, you know, defamation, which they didn't do, surprisingly. Why do you think they didn't do it? Why do you think they didn't They didn't do it? Because, yeah, they're guilty. Mm. But going back onto Stephen Lawrence, it's sickening to think that that happened in what, 1992, was it? So it happened about 30 years ago, maybe, maybe a bit longer. And then we had the Stephen Lawrence inquiry, which went on for ages. I didn't think that got published until like, I don't know, 1999 or something. And in that inquiry, it stated that the Metropolitan Police were institutionally racist. That's the expression that was used, institutionally racist. And now, 30 years on, the Met Police has been found to be, get this, institutionally racist. It still is. Nothing's changed. Nothing's improved. Nothing has improved, which is just another case of when we talk about the difference between Labour and, and the Conservatives, the Conservatives can get away with this kind of stuff because their voters don't care about it. Whereas Labour voters care about this stuff. And if Labour doesn't commit to the kind of things that we want them to commit to, like ensuring that the, the Met isn't run by a bunch of racist gobshites, 
they're not going to get in in the 2029 election no matter how big the majority is in, in the next one have you heard that nhs staff have been shafted again the minister for health and social care was on the news rounds this morning with kate burley god uh, if neville had been his decorator dacre wouldn't have taken interest in his case that's interesting the bloke who used to run autoglass said he wanted to give all his money away to progressive progressive progress uh, projects oh thanks lee can you get get, get his number <laughs> uh well this country's loaded bollocks it is indeed uh, i hope you can hear me all right i'm sorry if the sound's not particularly great but we are actually driving um lots of very tall indians around i'm one of them my granddad was very tall anglo indian but still says vendetta there you go i'm not sure Pretty tall people everywhere. Oh, we've got a super chat. Time for the UK to follow our Scandi cousins and become a social democracy. Could be one of the reforms that convinces the EU to let us rejoin. That's from One Angry Pagan, five pound super chat. Thank you very much, sir. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I see that. I see that the, the getting rid of the House of Lords is one step on the way to the future democracy of the United Kingdom. We need to have a House of Britain. We need to have representation from Scotland and Ireland, uh, Northern Ireland and Wales and Northern England. It can't just be this very south eastern part of the, 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 the country that is well overrepresented in the Lords. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not the way to do it. But hand in hand with that, I don't think we're going to see support for getting rid of the monarchy. I thought it might happen after the Queen died, but it, it won't. And we have to do, we live in a democracy. And despite how much fun it would be to abolish the monarchy, um, I don't think we'll get away with it. What we would get away with, though, is slimming it down a little bit, making it a little bit more erudite, let's say, and getting rid of some of these um, these clowns in charge. Because they are um, clowns. But, um, yeah, the, the fact that the royal family cost taxpayers so much money sticks in my craw a little bit um what can i say um i'm a progressive project and i'm skinned um exactly yes i remember having uh, a run-in with the racist police as a school kid here in leeds this is from back up uni i was picked on um due to being one of the tallest in a group of us at the time sorry that happened to you again this is um fueling up getting some fuel uh, Chris of the Dick told uh, them to stop following up on the actual murder, actual killer, uh, Matthew White, who died as a heroin addict. He told them to stop, she told them to stop following them up. Oh, it's just disgraceful, isn't it? Abolishing the laws was always was always before the monarchy, in my estimation. Yeah, the Lords needs to go, but also our voting system needs to be formed. This is why we talk about... Um, this is why we talk so often about um, bringing in PR, proportional representation. It would decimate the Tories. Well, I mean, they'll split them into two parties. Uh, and they'll probably be split down Europe lines. It will be, uh, well, maybe it's split into three, actually. Are the pro-EU people? It's, there's no pro-EU MPs left, I don't think. Um, but I could see the party splitting itself. But also, that's like one nation conservatism is, is gone now because it's been replaced with uh, Johnsonism, which is uh, all about cults of personality and um, just always being on the attack. And it's, it, it is very frustrating to see Vichy Sunak week in, week out at the, the dispatch box at Prime Minister's questions saying the same effing things over and over and over again. Where he's just like, um, where he's just like, um, oh yes, but if you were in charge, you would be worse somehow. I don't know how, but you would be. Admiral says, I don't get, I don't know why selected people are racist. We have the same color blood, we breathe the same air, we all sit on the toilet. I know Admiral, but some people, it's the only thing that makes them feel good about themselves is the is the skin color. That's it. That they haven't done anything or achieved anything in their lives that they're proud of, which I think is sad. A lot of these are parents. You know, you, you've got to think about someone who's who's got children and they're not the most important thing in their life. You know, they're not that they don't give their parents any pride whatsoever. In fact, they maybe they drive the racism. I don't know. Um, but that that really upsets me. Um, the fact that. What, what have you got to be proud of? Is it is it is it what you've done, where you've been? Is it your family? Is it? No, no, no. I'm, I'm proud of my skin color. But you've got no 
that that's just an accident of birth. Do you know what I mean? It's got nothing. You didn't do anything to do that. It's like people who brag about being meat eaters. It's like, okay. <laughs> that's just, okay. It's peculiar. I guess you need to know someone's a vegetarian if they're coming around because you don't want to um, feed them meat. Um, but if you are a meat eater and you post about it on Facebook, hey, look at me, I'm a meat eater. It's a bit of a weird one. Oh, do you want to stop and get some coffee or do you want to have time? Um, not in there. Okay. All right. Um, let's have a look. If anyone wants to pay to our uh, Catherine and Mind's uh, coffee fund, then uh, you're very welcome to throw in a super chat. We're probably going to end up going to Costa, so it's going to cost a lot of money. <laughs> I want devolution across the country to make it harder for the Tories to undermine the improvements. Yeah, Lucy, I think that's really important as well. The mayoral, the, 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 the metropolitan mayors in Liverpool and Manchester are a good idea, and I think that. They're a little bit hamstrung by what they can get away with because of the national government, but what they can get away with on the local level. Andy Burnham bringing in the re-regulation of buses in Manchester is massive and uh, very, very welcome as far as I'm concerned. Anecdotal evidence is the back of, it's the backbone of Tory arguments. They come up with the opinion first and then find the reasons to back it up instead of the other way around. Yeah, but it's even worse. Than uh, it, it's not even an anecdotal. It's, it's a hypothetical. It's like, you would be worse. And it's like, we're not talking about it. You know, it's not answering the question at all. If almost 50% wanted to stay in the EU, why can't we pay income tax in, to EU in return for EU membership? Pay council tax here, but contribute to the EU and get membership. Why wait five, ten years? Why? Because it just doesn't work like that. It would be great if we could just apply to get an EU passport, which is what you can do if you're from Northern Ireland. You can apply to get an EU passport. You can apply to get an Irish passport, but we can't uh, in the rest of the UK, which is kind of painful. Um, can I just keep the keys? Okay. Thanks. All right. Catherine's going out to get some coffee. Uh, oh, two pound. Thanks to Catherine for her driving duty. I'll tell her when she gets back in. <laughs> it's quite difficult as well because Catherine's deaf and she has to lip read. Um, when I'm driving, it's really hard for her to understand what I'm saying because she's going to look at me sideways and I've got to obviously look at the road. So she normally has um, Google, what's it called on? Um, Google thing. Um, Tech, speech to text on but uh in the country roads around glastonbury it just wasn't working at all so a bit of a nightmare but then when she's driving it's possibly even worse because i just can't because she can't look at me for that long you know we're not we're not filming a movie here where you can look away from what you're doing while you're driving for ages um lee corn says i oh, would we'll send a super chat but i'm absolutely skinned i know i know the feeling mate i know the feeling my passport's for now so i'm gonna open the door because it's a bit hot now. um my passport's one out. The next one I get will be a black passport. Yeah, same with me. And my passport runs out next February. Well, uh, it actually runs out next no uh, a year a year in November. But I've got to get it sorted six months earlier because you know the EU aren't allowing people in on passports that are over ten years old. I know I bully the point. Uh, thank you very much for the five pound super chat, one angry pagan. But we English are descendants of immigrants themselves. Therefore, racism is just hypocritical for me. Another five for coffee. Thank you so much, sir. Um, yes, you're absolutely right. It is hypocritical. It, 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 it's, it goes against everything. Like, it goes against science. But it also goes against people's religions. Like, I don't understand these older people who regard themselves as Christians and, and wang on about the fact that, oh, we're not a Christian nation anymore because these people are coming from other countries and they make us less Christian. And you're like, but hang on, Jesus himself wasn't white. He was a refugee in Egypt during the reign of King Herod. And he was born to a single mum. I mean, just like the things that these male reading Gaminati love to go on about. It's like, this is their God. This is the person that they worship beyond all other things. And, and he exemplifies all the things that they hate all the things that they get all pissy about you know people with different skin color or that's just just seems mad to me thanks very much for the super chat man um do you venture like the chap on bbc question time who claimed migrants were getting off the boat and heading straight for the nearest benefits office like they even exist uh but we need to make it happen graham we need to persuade eu to have individual membership we give an eu national tax money in return for our membership um this is what we can give 
individually. I actually had a conversation about this when we were fighting against Brexit, when we were doing the three blokes in the pub. Um, it was after we'd been to Gibraltar, because Gibraltar were looking to try and do something along those lines. It's kind of like um, associate member of the EU, uh, because they were very concerned about what would happen if they weren't part of... But it, there was a hard border between Gibraltar and Spain. Obviously, like a lot of the workers who work in Gibraltar come from Spain. A lot of people in Gibraltar go over to Spain to do their shopping. And the idea of having a hard border there and biometric checks and everything would be devastating. I mean... One of the examples that was given in Gibraltar was the fact that they don't have a, a waste incinerator. They used to have one, but because land is so precious over there, because there's not much of it, and there's a lot of people living on the rock, it means that um, you know every every square inch of, of plate, you know area where you can build stuff, they try and build stuff. So there was a waste incinerator, but they got rid of it in the 80s because the Spain joined the EU in 19. 85 and since then it was just free movements across the border so they would send all their trash over the border into spain to be incinerated or recycled or whatever and they were like we don't have we can't build a new one because the site that it used to be on has been built now with something else and we won't have anywhere to take our rubbish so what what are we going to do like seriously what are we going to do and this was a really interesting conversation to have because they're like we can't get boats big enough to get the rubbish out. This is like logistical stuff that people who just voted for Brexit, they're not going to think about logistics. They're going to think about how, how we get around the world, but there you go. Uh, one pound super chat from Wes. Thank you very much. Um, happy Pride, says uh, da David. Yeah, it's Pride all month still, uh, which is really cool. 2027 for me, hopefully the, the, we living in a space that's more EU friendly by then. I think we will. I think we will. Uh, if Labour get in, we are going to start the slow process of getting back towards our, our EU brothers and sisters. Um, and, um, you know, the sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you can't get a benefits in the UK without national insurance number. So when arriving on a boat, cannot get benefits straight away. I know, it, 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 yeah, but it's the lie that people coming from on, on boats get a job and they get a house and they get, you know, they get, they get put in a mansion. And people really believe it. People honestly believe these these mad stories that fly around because everyone wants to feel like the you know the problems in their life are caused by a faceless minority that they don't you know it, it, it's them. It's 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 just conspiracy against us. But there is a conspiracy. But it's conservatives. It's the Tories who were, who were, who were carrying it out. Uh, wait, Jesus wasn't white. No, I'm afraid not. I uh, bought Christian and dumped that doctrine like a hot potato uh, when I could. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, someone saying Jesus never existed. I don't think he probably didn't, but the idea that he was a, a holy man, a, you know, a preacher who said, love thy neighbor and do unto others as you'd like to, to be done to, which is you know, the, the golden rule, which had been said years earlier by Buddha, and I think Confucius probably said it as well. But um, yeah, he said some nice things. He said, yeah, be nice to each other. Unfortunately, the Christians out there just took that to mean just fight wars and kill everyone who's not like you and hate people for being gay. I was just like, well, I really don't think he said that. In fact, if Jesus is to be believed, he was 33 years old, unmarried and hung around with a bunch of sailors and prostitutes. Sounds pretty gay to me. Anyway, moving to the film. Um... <laughs> Also, every picture I see of Jesus, he's wearing what I can only call a dress. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, my my passport is a shiny new blue uh, black passport. I got a burgundy EU style cover. Um, if it was somewhere somehow possible to pay another twenty five pound for an Irish passport, I would have jumped on it. Yeah, I mean, you know, the you could do it. Associate member, if you're a member of, if you're a a citizen of certain countries that aren't EU members, you can apply for membership and, and get some of the benefits of that. I think that'd be great. Unfortunately, again, it will be something that if you've got the money, you're sorted. And I know I bang on about this all the time, but the biggest thing that annoys me about Brexit, about the people who told you and me and everyone else to vote for Brexit and it, it would be amazing. They're all millionaires. Hold on. Aaron Banks, Johnson, Mog, 
Richard Tice, all of them, uh, Daniel Hannon, all privately educated millionaires, their lives will not be affected. And, you know, if things get too bad in this country, that well, they can leave. We can't. We're trapped here now. We used to be able to just go whenever we wanted without to ask anyone's permission. And they've made it so we have to ask permission now to go anywhere, to do anything. Can't even protest. We'll go on strike. Um, like more on Tory time, um, he saw someone. Of course, he did. I like it when James O'Brien takes people down who say stupid shit like that. On Twitter, I'm forever asking if anyone in, with an EU passport wants to adopt a middle aged, somewhat grumpy git so I can get one. <laughs> yeah. Um, how far have you got on your trip back to Durham? Uh, we should be getting there about half two. So, um, yeah, we're, we're about a tenth of the way now, 15% of the way. Um, if you had the money, could you have tried the Malta route to EU citizenship? Yeah, if you had the money, Christopher. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The rich people, they, they they haven't suffered too much, and they won't suffer too much from Brexit. Whereas the rest of us, and, and younger people especially, who have been shut out of things like Erasmus, which Suella Braveman made use of, but now she's shut that out from everybody else. And freedom of movement, something that Priti Patel's parents used when we were part of the Common, Commonwealth um free movement zone which ended in about 1973 um but they 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 used that to migrate from uganda before idi amin took over and and, and it forced everyone of asian descent out of uganda um so they used their freedom of movement and then she's there proud as punch you know with that shit eating grin on her face that horrible little smirk that she does going i've ended your freedom of movement <laughs> Anyway, uh, come to Cardiff for a uh, a couple. Of, oh, Nick and Diff is in Cardiff. Oh, it makes sense. Though. It's taken me a long time to realise that. Um, Andrew, uh, we don't we don't have time. I'm afraid to pick the kids up from school. <laughs> Hashtag responsible parenting. Uh, their offshore bank accounts are safe from EU regs now. Job done. Yeah. So, one of the reasons, one of the big reasons why Brexit was going to come in. Uh, sorry, why 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 these millionaires wanted Brexit so badly was the EU was making new laws about stopping these ridiculous tax systems like what is it the 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 double Dutch Irish sandwich or something which is a way of moving your money around from different countries in the EU and, and not paying any corporation tax and they said right we've, we're, we're sick of this we're going to make sure that everyone every company pays their fair share of tax and uh, yeah, the rich companies and, and the rich people in the UK went, oh, let's go out of here. With the help of Russia, by the way. Don't forget that. Okay, um, no worries. Next time, mate. Yeah, yeah, I need to get down to Cardiff at some point. At 33, the Bible said he was halfway through his life, which is five years longer than the average poor person in 2023. Indeed. Ah, anyway, right. So thank you very much for watching. I'm going to call it a, a morning. And uh, I'll probably take over driving duties to save Catherine having to drive all the way there because it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, on, on the old motorway, we'll uh, listen to some more out and down, listen to some more Lana Del Rey. <laughs> I, I didn't actually go and see Lana Del Rey. She has to, has to finish early. Did you hear about this? She, she finished like six songs early because she spent too long getting her hair done. Bit naughty. Um, bye all, safe travels. So um, I won't be back tomorrow, but I'll try and do a, a moment of truth when I get home. Uh, t today, because I probably want to do one about that story that came out about the income tax, I find that really frustrating, interesting, and worth pointing out. Um, why it's so bad and why we should be using this sort of thing as a vehicle for pushing for universal basic income uh, before the end of the decade. Um, uh, my shield at your back, guys. What a great expression. Uh, thanks very much for that, uh, pe Angry Pagan. We've also got Lee Corn saying, did you see Blossoms? I mean, actually, yes. <laughs> they were doing Smith's covers. It was brilliant. And I saw Johnny Moore with uh, the, the Pretenders, uh, which was just brilliant, uh, with the, the Paul McCartney standing off to the side of the stage. Uh, I saw the editors yesterday and um, made one dance. Sophie Ellis-Bexter, who was really good. I saw the Windrush, the Windrush Choir, which was fantastic. And um, and Blondie, who I thought was really good. She she didn't seem to be too happy to be there, but hey, it was fun. Anyway, so uh, hopefully I'll try and get another ticket for next year. And uh, yeah, I actually performed. I actually performed this year. I've got still got my Shangri-La pass on. There you go, to Shangri-La. Um, slightly cleaner toilets, only slightly. Okay, associate membership, Graves. <laughs> Let's do it, Alex. Yeah, um, it'd be worth looking into. 
not just for Brit Britain, but for other other countries that are on the periphery of the EU. I'm thinking like Sweden, uh, Switzerland, and Norway, and um, Ukraine, Belarus, um, not Belarus. Uh, I think they're interested. Moldova, Bosnia Herzegovina, uh, Montenegro, um, yeah, Macedonia, and uh, Serbia, places like that. I think it'd be well worth um, the EU sort of looking into doing that because. We now appreciate the the awesomeness of the EU, that, like never before. It's the only good thing that came of Brexit was the fact that um, it made people in, who live in Britain a lot more pro-European, greatest continents in the world. Anyway, so and I know I should know. I've seen a few. Um, so anyway, I will be back tomorrow morning. It'll be Fillmore House uh, coming back to you at nine thirty with Morning Brew. So um, until then, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for the super chats. Thanks for joining me. Um, I can tell I'm exhausted. <laughs> Hope I haven't rambled too much. But um, yeah, you're all beautiful. Have a great day. Don't get sunburned like I have on the back of my hands. <laughs> and um, I'll see you Wednesday. And until then, I'll say hello, good evening, welcome, and goodbye.